This video contains spoilers, so X out if you don't want to hear them. So as the war over If The Last Jedi was a good or bad movie rages on, there is one thing that many Star Wars fans were extremely upset about, me being one of them when I saw the movie for the first time. And that is the identity of Snoke being revealed. Since The Force Awakens, we've had this idea of this omnipotent, intimidating character, Snoke, that we don't know anything about. We just are like, oh my god, what is he? Who is he? Is he Plagueis? Is he makes Windu gone wrong? Is he... All these theories. But we have to look at something George Lucas did when he first made Star Wars, and that's... We have to look at who the rise of Palpatine was based off of. Because... Within that, I believe, is the answer to who Snoke is. Now, Lucas based most of Star Wars off Japanese uh, philosophy, characters. Darth Vader is wearing a samurai helmet and such. Uh, Jedi are very much follow the samurai code, minus all the violence and everything. But the politics are not based off the Japanese. They're actually based off an old ally of the Japanese, and that is Nazi Germany. Palpatine's rise to power is exactly the rise of power of Adolf Hitler. Now, how do I explain this? It's very simple, in fact, how it is connected to each other. Much as Hitler did... Palpatine sees power through pretty much scapegoating and having a powerful military presence behind him. Hitler did this with the SS. Palpatine did this with the clone army. So both were able to pretty much connive their way into power using deception and, for example... Hitler said that the anarchists tried to take down Germany, so the Reichstag, the German Senate, granted him emergency powers, which he used to declare martial law. And Palpatine says the Jedi tried to kill him and the Senate, and then he is given the rest of the emergency powers and declares martial law. So this is how these two were able to create their empires, and we clearly see a similarity between the two. Now let's fast forward to both deaths. Hitler had in place when he died a plan called Operation Clausewitz. This is what Operation Cinder is based off of. Both operations' jobs were once the leader was dead, and the leaders we mean Hitler and Palpatine, once they were dead, everything would be destroyed. The German army was ordered to destroy everything, and the way they rationalized to do what they did was let the Allies conquer rubble. This is the same exact thing that Operation Cinder is. Operation Cinder is let the rebels conquer nothing. Let it just be a destroyed galaxy, and let's move. So, with all these similarities, there is another big similarity we see during the final days of the Third Reich and the Empire. Both had a consolidation plan, a contingency plan. Once what was done was done, they would consolidate their powers and try to reorganize and come back. The Germans did this behind a man named Karl Dernitz. He was the chief of the German Navy and Hitler's designated heir apparent to the... Well, he was the first president of Germany, technically. The Empire did this and became the First Order. So, the First Order was obviously more successful than Karl Dönitz's uh, provisional army and government they tried to make. But that's pretty much just for the sake of the series. So, maybe 
did the Emperor have a contingency leader? Because let's think back to the Darth Vader comics. Palpatine had other students that we didn't know about. So, what? what's the possibility that maybe the person he designated to be his successor, we never even just saw? This comes down to whoever that successor is, is Snoke. Now, in the Aftermath books, there is a very obvious contingency leader. And that is Gallius Rax. I agree 100% with other theorists who say that he is definitely Snoke. He... I, I honestly can't see a reason why he couldn't be Snoke, other than people just not wanting him to be Snoke. Which it does make sense that Vader wouldn't have known about him, because a lot of the times when Vader would see a Force sensitive, he would just kill him because he felt intimidated that the Force sensitive would take his place as the apprentice. So it makes sense, and it also makes sense that Rox saw the rise and fall of the Empire. Because he was born about 35 years before the liberation of Kashyyyk in the Aftermath novels. So he did see from the beginning and end of the Empire. And the other thing is, everyone's like, well, he's a Force sensitive. Snoke's a Force sensitive. We don't know that Gallius Rax is. Well, we don't know, but. There's never anything that said he isn't. Again, Palpatine finds him on Jakku. It's a very strange place to find a random kid, and Jakku is a desert planet. Who else have we seen that is a Force-sensitive on an Outer Rim desert planet? That is Anakin Skywalker, obviously. So, what's the possibility that Rex is the same? In Star Wars, nothing happens on accident. So, I believe he is Force-sensitive, and Palpatine made him his secret apprentice, and when the Empire began to crumble, he took command as contingency leader. Now, where do the scars and everything come from? Well, at the Battle of Jakku, where he tried to reorganize everything to leave, he was betrayed by Admiral Sloan. His ship was destroyed, and it was presumed he was dead. But, again, why did he have to die? We've seen people, like in the Clone Wars, survive starship uh, crashes, so why couldn't he? So now, I feel there's more than enough evidence to state that he probably is Snoke. Another reason I believe it's Rax and not some omnipotent force is strictly because of how he was killed. How could someone who's more powerful than Palpatine be tricked so easily? And another reason I feel he is the secret apprentice is because, if we notice, most of Palpatine's apprentices never became full Siths. They always stayed as a warrior or inquisitor or such. They never completely turned like the Inquisitors or uh, Asajj Ventress. All the others, they stayed the same. So that's a reason behind the blue eyes. But another thing is, Snoke doesn't have to be his name. There's a theory, Snoke is an acronym, which is Sith No One Knew Existed. Which would make sense when Kylo Ren, after killing Snoke and the Praetorian Guards, say the following lines in this order. Snoke, Skywalker, Sith, and Jedi. Why do those two match up the way they did? So, maybe Snoke was a Sith, but then realized the failures of the Sith... And when he went into hiding with the First Order, and recreated it as the First Order, he 
decided the Sith ways were not a safe and practical way of handling things. So that is my theory. I believe Snoke is definitely Rax, especially following The Last Jedi and his uh, untimely death. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, these are just theories, uh, but I do believe this one is really correct. If you liked the video, like and subscribe. If you didn't like, like and subscribe anyway. Have a heart. <laughs> and as always, may the Force be with you. Always.